talked about the run on silver, which has simply escalated. That's a good thing, but it is concluding its cup formation. I bring up the cup formation because it kind of looks like this, right? I mean, nothing is smooth. It bounces and all that, but it'll go up to 48, 50, 50 bucks an ounce. Then you'll see a big run because it will have broken out of a long term trend. But we like this run that's happening right now. What about spot gold? Well, it just had a new breakout. Can you see that at the end? So this is also going much higher, but neither one of these reflect the true fundamental value of, an, of a real ounce of silver or a real ounce of gold. Today, we're diving into an insightful and thought-provoking discussion led by Lynette Zhang. As always, Lynette brings her extensive knowledge and expertise to the table, giving us a clear-eyed view of the current financial landscape. In this video, she covers the concentration of market returns, the historical parallels to past financial crises, and the strategic moves you should consider to safeguard your wealth. So, let's unpack Lynette Zhang's latest analysis and understand how we can navigate these turbulent financial times. Lynette starts by pointing out a crucial trend in the current market, a significant concentration of returns among just 10 stocks, accounting for 85% of the market gains this year. This phenomenon, known as herding, may look promising on the way up, but can be disastrous on the way down. She warns that the shift can happen swiftly and unpredictably, often catching investors off guard. She emphasizes that this concentration is a classic wealth transfer mechanism, benefiting major players like Bezos, Zuckerberg, and JP Morgan Chase. This scenario echoes the prelude to the 1929 crash when insiders capitalized on the public's lack of awareness before the credit crunch led to a market collapse and a subsequent depression. Lynette urges us not to be complacent, as history often repeats itself. Transitioning to commodities, Lynette highlights the escalating run on silver, which she describes as nearing the completion of a cup formation. This pattern suggests a significant breakout is imminent, potentially pushing silver prices to new highs around $1.48 to $1.50 per ounce. She notes that while the spot market prices for silver and gold are rising, they still do not reflect their true fundamental values. Lynette stresses the importance of understanding the intrinsic value of gold and silver which serve as sound money and protect purchasing power over time. She argues that the rising gold prices signal a failing currency and that these metals are still undervalued despite reaching new highs. Before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more expert insights and analysis. Market returns remain heavily concentrated with just 10 stocks accounting for 85% of the market gains year to date. Now look, this is called herding, right? So it looks great on the way up, but it's abysmal on the way down. Do you know when that change is going to occur? Mm, kind of hidden from you as well, because markets can stay irrational a lot longer than you can stay solvent. And when that changes, let me tell you, darlings, that changes very quickly. They can stay solvent, insolvent, until they don't. So who's taking advantage of this? Because we know that this is a wealth transfer mechanism. Bezos, right? Those are one of those stocks. Zuckerberg. Those are also one of those stocks. JP, JP Morgan Chase. Those are also one of those stocks. So why not take advantage? This is exactly what the insiders did in 1929 before the credit was pulled from the public and the markets imploded, sending us into a depression. You might say, well, this time is different. Mm, I don't think it's different. And it really typically never is. So what are we looking at here? Let's go ahead and just take a look what's happening in the spot markets. And we're going to start with silver because we talked about the run on silver, which is simply escalated. That's a good thing, but it is concluding its cup formation. I bring up the cup formation because it kind of looks like this, right? I mean, nothing is smooth. It bounces and all that, but it'll go up to 48, 50, 50 bucks an ounce. 
Then you'll see a big run because it will have broken out of a long term trend. But we like this run that's happening right now. What about spot gold? Well, it just had a new breakout. Can you see that at the end? So this is also going much higher, but neither one of these reflect the true fundamental value of, an, of a real ounce of silver or a real ounce of gold. This is sound money and a rising gold price particularly is an indication of a failing currency. So we saw all of those tops and then it was pushed back. Well, now it's going up to new all time highs, but yet continues to be severely undervalued. Don't stay away from it because you think, oh, it's too high. Oh, it's going to, I never really worry about the spot market. I look at it primarily for you because I'm quite clear on gold's fundamental value. That's the true value for its most important function, which is to hold your purchasing power over time. But we see the stock markets making new high. We see spot gold and spot silver making new highs. Let's look at this relative performance chart. How are they performing against each other? Now to make it less confusing, I just use the NASDAQ because that's the one that's really running anyway. So we're gonna look at the NASDAQ. There it is down there. Spot gold has outperformed it. And this is just the last 200 and some odd days. And then there's spot silver. So clearly spot silver has outperformed them all on a short term basis while the stock market is severely overvalued and the physical gold and silver market are severely undervalued, which one do you really want to be holding? All of those are intangible. I like holding it in my possession because if you don't hold it, you don't own it and looking for the truth and valuations from Wall Street, might as well put these back on again because Wall Street's never going to show you the truth. They are just going to set things up so they win and you lose. You want to win? This is what you got to do. You got to put most of your wealth in an undervalued, first of all, take the glasses off. Second of all, hold most of your wealth in an undervalued asset that is in a long-term positive trend that runs zero counterparty risk. It's not that complicated. It's actually super simple. So now Wall Street only knows those trading values, but you know the truth. Can I have the chart, please? Okay, so it's just about trading on every single asset, every single fiat money asset has been, well, physical too, frankly, has been turned into a trading vehicle. It's traders that are determining the prices. You need to have the ability to look underneath the surface and see the truth in valuations because frankly, that's the only way that you can make an educated choice that puts your best interests first, period. So that's what we're about. And now I will take some questions. Um, can you, okay. Nebula Watchers asked, I think when the Fed lowers interest rates, oop, let me put my glasses on so I can read it easier. Sorry about that. I think when the Fed lowers interest rates, that's when you need to worry about the stock, stock market tanking. Well, maybe, maybe not. I mean, think back to, Venezuela, because that's the one that comes to mind the first, as they were entering their hyperinflation, the stock market was roaring as the currency was losing all of its value because people were attempting to flee to something, anything that could hold its value better. But this is sound money. This is what really holds its value the best. So what'll happen when the Fed pivots and lowers interest rates, that simply enables, oops. Oops, you gotta make sure. Ugh. That simply enables this. 
I wish they'd have a little bit of trouble with printing money. So, um, yeah, I actually think that you will see the stock market go up because it's borrowing to buy back stock. It's borrowing to pay dividends. It's borrowing to make things look okay. But quite honestly, you know, and I know we're live and I'm sorry I'm taking this minute or two, but I got to tell you. Lynette then examines the relative performance of spot gold and silver compared to the stock market particularly the NASDAQ. Over the past several months, spot silver has outperformed both spot gold and the stock market. This highlights the severe overvaluation of stocks and the undervaluation of precious metals. Lynette's advice is clear, prioritize holding tangible assets like physical gold and silver, as they do not carry the same risks as intangible market assets. She cautions against relying on Wall Street's valuations which are often manipulated to favor institutional traders over individual investors. Instead, she encourages us to look beyond surface-level prices and understand the true value of assets. Addressing a viewer's question about the potential impact of the Federal Reserve lowering interest rates, Lynette draws a parallel to Venezuela's hyperinflation period. During such times, the stock market can appear to thrive as people flee to assets perceived as safer than rapidly devaluing currency. However, she warns that this could create a bubble, much like the one leading to the 1987 Black Monday crash. Lynette recounts her personal experience during the 1987 crash, describing the panic and chaos that ensued. She emphasizes that no market is immune to implosion and stresses the safety of physical assets like gold and silver over paper or digital representations of wealth. What we're really looking at here is a bubble. And I was there on Black Monday in 1987 and nobody saw this coming. I went out to lunch that morning. Everything seemed normal to me. Of course, I was a new stockbroker, but nobody was talking about there being any problems or issues. When I came back from lunch, all Hades had broken loose. And, you know, I was at Shearson. So the way that the office was structured is you walked in and there were two large rooms on either side with a big, huge TV with the ticker symbols going across. And usually there'd be like, you know, a half a dozen, mostly men, actually probably all men back then in the 80s, in one room and another half dozen men in another room. And they were just talking and blah, blah, blah. I came back from lunch. That place was packed. The phones were ringing off the hook. I went in the back where all of the stockbrokers' offices were, and it looked like nobody was there. Oh, they were there all right. They were literally, not figuratively, literally under their desks, not taking any phone calls. I know what a stock market implosion looks like, smells like, tastes like, and I'm gonna tell you, there is nothing safe except for this except for this and except for this. And I'm not talking about ETFs. Will they go up when there's a flight to safety? Of course, but you don't own the underlying gold. You don't have access to it. It is purely designed to mimic the move in the manipulated spot market. You need to hold it. You need to own it. Lynette underscores the critical principle of if you don't hold it, you don't own it. She explains that EDES and other financial instruments designed to track the prices of commodities do not provide the security of owning the actual physical asset. In times of crisis, only tangible assets can guarantee true ownership and value retention. Moving on to practical advice, Lynette addresses the importance of food security during economic transitions. She highlights the decline in income for small local farmers despite rising food prices, suggesting a deeper systemic issue. Lynette advocates for becoming more self-sufficient, such as through urban farming, to ensure food availability during crises. In response to a viewer's question about the amount of silver needed to protect one's family, Lynette advises that this depends on individual living costs and specific needs. The key is to accumulate enough to cover essential expenses and preserve wealth through turbulent times. And Tim Chadwick asks, what happens at the push of a button when they decide you don't need your crypto because you don't physically hold it? Exactly my point. If you don't hold it, you don't own it. These things have not yet been tested. 
They have not gone through a crisis. They were born after the great financial crisis, or at least that's when they became apparent to the public. So I agree with that. Oops, oops, oops. Adam took that away from me. Okay, okay, where are we? Oh, okay, I, I don't really, I, I don't wanna do that one. <laughs> okay, um, you, we did that one. Let's go to Belly Dance Rabia R. Stock up on food, peeps, it's coming. Yes, indeed. Food becomes the single biggest issue for people during these transitions. We can see that happening all over the world now. And farmer's income, your small local farming income, that's been declining 24% over the last couple of years. Wait a minute, food prices are up so high. Why are these farmers losing money? I'm actually gonna dive into that. I have some stuff pulled up, so bear with me, but 100%. Food is the, you can't live without food, you can't live without water. That's why the mantra developed. That's why I became an urban farmer. So I can feed as many people as possible. And Mika Riggs asks, how many ounces of silver will make sure our families are safe from this mess? Are they mess they are creating for us all to live out? Well, that's gonna vary based upon your current cost of living and what you need to protect again.